Rockwood, Ontario is a small farming community of about 13,000 people. It draws tourism for its scenic conservation area and has been the set of films such as Cheaper by the Dozen 2, Camp Rock 2, and A History of Violence. But beyond its beauty, the town is known for a tragic case which has remained cold and unsolved for 13 years. Today, I introduce you to the Rockwood Jane Doe. On August 28, 2005, a man stumbled upon the body of a woman in the woods behind a rest stop on Highway 7 near Rockwood. He called the police, and immediately they sought to find a name for this woman without an identity. It's been almost 13 years, and this woman still has no name. Here is what we know about the Rockwood Jane Doe. She was a Caucasian female. She had no record of tattoos. She had a slim to medium build with hair that had recently been lightened to a light brown to a reddish brown with four centimeters of the root ends showing a dark natural brown. Police officers had stated her height to be 5'4 to 5'6 and weighing around 130 pounds. However, other sources state her to be 5'3 to 5'5 and weighing around 110 pounds. Her estimated age is between 25 and 45 years old and investigators believe she may have been a recent immigrant to Canada from Europe. However, I cannot find any records stating why. Tess could not pinpoint the specific date that this woman died, but it's estimated that her time of death was anywhere between two to six weeks before she was found. As it was a hot month, the decomposition was fairly extensive and toxicology tests were not able to be conducted. An autopsy revealed the woman had suffered from arthritis in her lifetime at her neck and her upper to lower back area. This was not due to aging, but instead a previous injury, either caused by repeated trauma or acute trauma. So repeated manual labor or something like a car crash. Police believe the woman was dragged to the wooded area by her arms and the person responsible for dumping her used a large vehicle to transport the victim. Her body was under a Woods brand sleeping bag sold by Canadian tires across Canada. The bag was in good condition, but the color that it was in had been discontinued the year prior to her death. The investigators on the Jane Doe's case believed her to have had a rough or tragic lifestyle, and after hearing these next few details, you'll see why. The woman had a fracture to her seventh rib of her front rib cage. Additionally, after the age of 18, she had broken her left cheek her nose, and her left eye socket. The victim's injuries were old and had healed poorly, which left investigators to wonder if they were ever medically treated. The injuries would also have been readily apparent, distorting the woman's face. Her face may have appeared lopsided or off kilter. A quote from the OPP lead investigator stated, It is impossible that anyone who saw this woman would not have noticed the injuries and not have remembered them. The victim was wearing a beige Atmosphere brand tank top size 1012. It had one inch straps and a round neckline. She was wearing black corduroy 
illegal jean wear shorts. The bra she was wearing was size 34B. It had the number 31 printed on the left cup and it was pink. It is a 725 Originals brand and this is a brand sold by Walmart. And she was wearing thong style underwear which had a small white bow at the waist. The brand was Revit Intimate. She's wearing no shoes and her clothes were found to be manufactured in Montreal. However, the shorts are sold at Giant Tigers in Ontario. Her bra was manufactured this summer she died. There is no evidence of this woman being sexually assaulted. There are very few theories on this case, but I will read you a few that I found online. As all her garments were made in Montreal, it's thought by some that she may have bought her clothes while passing through Montreal. Other missing women who have been speculated to be the Rockwood Jane Doe include Chammy Churcher, online interested in this investigation note that there was a music festival in Guelph, Ontario which is about 20 minutes away from Rockwood. At this festival there was a band from Montreal which may explain why that woman was in the area. Due to her several injuries, investigators believe this woman may have had a past of prostitution or being a runaway. One comment which I agree with from user Finn on Web Sleuths. Reconstruction in clay is well done, but is such a generic look. The features could be just about anyone.